Okay, so I'm in the playground here, and what I want to do is I want to test two of these models. The claim is that we will see shorter responses, or we can expect shorter responses from these newer models. So I'm actually going to use the compare feature here in the playground, and then I'm going to use this experimental flash version, because this is a much faster model, but I'm going to use the previous version and then compare to the version that they just released, which is this one. You can also do it again with the 1.5 Pro model and do that comparison. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to upload a paper. So I've uploaded a paper here, which is a paper I just recently tweeted that talks about chain of thought without prompting, how to elicit chain of thought prompting in these models using some new decoding mechanism. And what I'm going to ask this model is to summarize the main contribution of this paper. This is a very common question that I ask from research papers. So I'm expecting that the small is able to do this. But what I'm trying to pay attention to here is how quick and also what's the output quality like. And in terms of quality, I'm talking about whether I'm getting shorter responses. For some questions, I want shorter responses. I don't want them all to give me this verbose long answer because that's not a really good user experience. Again, very useful for developers to have such type of capability natively supported in these models. I'm going to ask what is the main contribution in the paper? Very common question that typically asked from these papers to better understand what this paper is about and whether it's worth spending time reading it. All right, so you can see both models now running. Okay, so I'm getting a response here. Look at how long this response is. And this is from the Flash Experimental, the previous iteration of this model. Look at it, like it's a very long response. So what I'm expecting here is a very short response from this model. Let's compare now the difference. Look at it. So this is a much shorter response and it doesn't have like this kind of formatting as well. So there's definitely something that changed with this model. You can also test it with the 1.5 Pro and you will see the same behavior. Google released a bunch of really cool new updates for their Gemini model series, including reduced 1.5 Pro pricing, increased rate limits, and much more. In this video, we're going to go through some of these important updates. And also, we're going to be testing out some of the improvements, such as getting shorter responses from some of these models and testing out other capabilities as well. What they're releasing here is two updated production-ready Gemini models. It's so Gemini 1.5 Pro 002, Gemini 1.5 Flash 002. And what this includes is more than 50% reduced price on the 1.5 Pro models. So this is both input and output for prompts less than 128k tokens. 2x higher rate limits on the 1.5 Flash and 3x higher on the 1.5 Pro. So those are the rate limits. Now there are some more details about that below and we will go through that and where you can find that information as well. 2x faster output and 3x lower latency. This is really important, how fast the outputs are generated and also the time to the first token. And this impacts latency and in turn will impact the type of applications that you build with the LLMs. I'm talking more about the experience. Chat applications, more real-time applications, recommendation systems, question answering systems, search systems, and so on. And then there is this updated default filter settings, which is they basically disabled the safety filters. And that basically now gives you control over what kind of safety or level of safety you want in these models. So that's the summary of the updates here. Now let's go through some of the details. Keep in mind that these models are free to use in Google AI Studio and the Gemini API. So let's start off with the first main announcement here. Improve overall quality with larger gains in math, long context, and vision. So they're really focusing on making these models really good at reasoning and math word problem solving. And also because a lot of people use these Gemini models since they have support for 2 million tokens for a lot of long context type of problems. So like you can upload thousands of PDFs and synthesize information, ask questions, have a conversation with those PDFs. It's a very common use case, and the Gemini model seems to be really good at this. They don't mention too much about the vision capabilities, but below here we see some of the improvements in terms of performance across these different benchmarks. You will see that we have the image benchmarks down here and how the 1.5 Flash and Gemini 1.5 Pro 002. I'm assuming these are 002, the ones that were announced today. You can see the overall improvements. I think those are significant improvements in terms of how they compare to the previous 
iteration of this model. One thing they note here is that they see a 7% increase in MMLU Pro. So I'm looking at the MMLU Pro, which is measuring general capabilities of these models. They see a significant performance boost. But look at the mat and hidden mat. Hidden mat is an internal holdout, apparently. And they made a 20% improvement. That's kind of insane how quickly they have improved that model on those data sets. So let's look at it here. You can see how it jumped from 54.9 all the way to 77.9. And similarly with the other model, how it really skyrocketed in terms of performance. Similarly for Helium Matt, you can see the performance boost here. So overall, this shows that this model is probably much better at MAT capabilities. This is something I will be testing out. I'm working on a video to test out and compare some of these newer models like O1 in terms of how good they are at math problem solving and what's kind of the gap between these now standard large language models compared to these large reasoning models. So that's an interesting experiment that I'm running. I will have more updates in the future. So this will become more relevant then. They're mentioning that they have trained these models to have less hunting and fewer refusals okay, and more helpful responses across many topics. I think that's really important if you want to be able to customize these models to your use case. Not every use case you will use like safe filters or you will benefit from refusals or too much refusals. That's an important capability that developers should be able to customize. Down here, they also make note of for specific use cases like summarization, question answering, and extraction. Sometimes you are just extracting small bits of information. The default output length of the updated models is 5 to 20% shorter than previous models. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to test this out as a first test because I think this is an interesting one. Most of the models today, what they do is that you need to spend a lot of time on customizing your prompt to get it to answer shorter response for some type of use cases. And if this is something that the model now natively supports, I think this is really useful for developers. Okay, so I'm in the playground here. And what I wanna do is I wanna test two of these models. The claim is that we will see shorter responses or we can expect shorter responses from these newer models. So I'm actually gonna use the compare feature here in the playground. And then I'm going to use this experimental flash version because this is a much faster model, but I'm going to use the previous version and then compare to the version that they just released, which is this one. You can also do it again with the 1.5 Pro model and do that comparison. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to upload a paper. So I've uploaded a paper here, which is a paper I just recently tweeted that talks about chain of thought without prompting, how to elicit chain of thought prompting in these models using some new decoding mechanism. And what I'm gonna ask this model is to summarize the main contribution of this paper. This is a very common question that I ask from research papers. So I'm expecting that this model is able to do this. But what I'm trying to pay attention to here is how quick and also what's the output quality like. And in terms of quality, I'm talking about whether I'm getting shorter responses. For some questions, I want shorter responses. I don't want the model to give me this verbose long answer because that's not a really good user experience. Again, very useful for developers to have such type of capability natively supported in these models. I'm going to ask what is the main contribution in the paper? Very common question that typically asked from these papers to better understand what this paper is about and whether it's worth spending time reading it. All right, so you can see both models now running. Okay, so I'm getting a response here. But look at how long this response is. And this is from the Flash Experimental, the previous iteration of this model. Look at it, like it's a very long response. So what I'm expecting here is a very short response from this model. Let's compare now the difference, look at it. So this is a much shorter response and it doesn't have like this kind of formatting as well. So there's definitely something that changed with this model. You can also test it with the 1.5 Pro and you will see the same behavior. So that's really cool to see. Again, this is something you want to have a bit more customization over as well, like if you want to make it shorter. And that's something you can do because these models have also been trained a lot on being able to follow instructions really well. In fact, that's something that they mentioned in their blog post right here is for chat-based products, users might prefer longer responses by default. So there are some prompting strategies that you can use to enable this. You can make models more verbose if that's what you want. So if you're getting shorter responses like you saw in my use case, which I really wanted, and you want to make those longer responses, then you can just prompt the model to give you longer responses. There's an excellent example here if you're interested in that. So I will encourage you to check that out. In fact, here is an example that I took from their documentation. So this one says in the system instruction, 
all questions should be answered comprehensively with details unless the user requests a concise response specifically respond in the same language as the query. And so I'm asking a question and this is what I get from the model response. I'm gonna run this again just to show you, but you can also get that behavior from a zero zero to models. Here you go. And you can see now you can get these lengthy responses. I can also do that with the paper QA example that I showed you too, if that's what you want. All right, let's continue with the announcement here. Here are more details on supported use cases as well for Gemini 1.5 Pro, and they also talk about the pricing. So the best place to find out more about the pricing is to actually go right here. So there is an excellent summary of the pricing that you get from these models. Something worth noting here is that the announcement today is claiming a 64% price reduction on input tokens, 52% price reduction on output tokens, and a 64% price, percent price reduction on incremental cash tokens for the strongest 1.5 series model. So that's the Gemini 1.5 Pro, and that's effective October 1st, 2024. You can find all the details here in the pricing page. I will put a link in the description for you to find out more about it. Uh, but you will see here effective October 1st, you will see the price reductions in context caching. Now, what's interesting is this particular one right here. I want to highlight that because this is very close to the pricing that we're getting from Cloud Trooper 5 Sonnet, if I'm not mistaken. And they also increase rate limits. You can also find the rate limits right there, but they significantly improve them for both these models, 1.5 Pro and 1.5 Flash. You can find those details in the pricing page. This one is about faster output. As I mentioned initially, some of these models, you want to use them for like real-time applications, recommendation systems, search engines, and things like that. And you want these models to have the ability to output tokens much faster and also you want to have lower latency as well so you can see how they have done some improvements on latency and also the output speed as well so you can see this one is more measuring seconds to first token chunk received from june 23rd all the way to september 22nd you will see the decrease of latency over that time span which is incredible. We're only going to get much faster models and lower latency models, which is really exciting for developers because this could be a bottleneck for a lot of applications and developers building real-time applications with LLMs. These are the filter settings. This is, again, they mention here that for the models released today, the filters will not be applied by default so that developers can determine the configuration best suited for their use case. The theme that I'm getting here from this announcement is that the control is on you. So you have to be familiar with how to use these models now. I think you need some level of expertise and there's a lot of documentation out there. There's a lot of really great material to educate yourself on that. We also have our academy where we build out courses to teach people about LLM. So do check it out. I'm going to provide a link in the description if you want to take our courses. And we're also going to build out courses for the Gemini models, which is something that I'm excited about. To show you what I mean here is if you have the Gemini 1.5 Pro 002 here, you can go to edit safety settings and you will see that most of these have been turned off and with the exception of civic integrity. I think this is more about election stuff. Now you have control over this. And I think this is really powerful for developers because now they get to tune how these models behave and the kind of outputs that the models are allowed to generate. So if you look at the older model, so like let's look at this one, for instance, you will see that all of this has a default setting here where these filters have been set for you. Just keep that in mind. All right, so lastly here, we have this Gemini 1.5 Flash 8B Experimental 0924. This is the smaller version of the Flash model. That's really neat that we have a small model also that we can experiment with just to see how we can use it in the process of building applications. Not everything is going to require a big general purpose language model. So it's good to have these different versions or smaller versions of these models because sometimes they're good enough for what you're trying to do. And so it's good to have this, again, significant performance increase across both text and multi-mod use cases. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to actually test this model just to see how good it is. I haven't really tested it on any multi-model capabilities. So I'm gonna do that now. So I have this example here 
of a JSON invoice that I've used in the past. So I provided an invoice and all the other models, the bigger ones are pretty good at this, but I haven't really tested on the smaller one. So I just wanted to test that out to see how good it is. I downloaded this from the internet. This is not a real invoice, keep that in mind. And I'm gonna check out how this model actually did in terms of extracting the information from this invoice. So that's the image I provided to the model. And this is the response that I get in terms of JSON format. So invoice number that, we have the invoice date. So this is built to that person and there's a phone number and so on. Okay, all of that looks correct. And I'm gonna look now at the items here and the totals and so on. So we have all the items. Okay, that looks good. And then we have the total 500. Uh, this is a total payment information. So there is a payment information section and then there is a shipping address. Payment information right here. And there is a shipping address. I'm not sure where the shipping address is. There's no information about shipping here, but I guess it's gonna be this. So it extracted this as shipping address. There's no explicit shipping address statement here. So I'm wondering if that's something that the model hallucinated. There's definitely some information here that was added. So the model just kind of inferred that that could be the shipping address. All right, very cool. So I'm gonna end the video there before it gets too long. I'm gonna be doing a more extended version of this. As I mentioned, I am working on a course, which I'm very excited to share more details at some point on the Gemini model series. So do check out our academy for more announcements on that. Thank you for watching. Please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you all on the next one.